Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show how to prepare a project for precision agriculture with high resolution spatial data that is freely available for the Netherlands. We'll use the PDOC services plugin to load orthophotos in RGB and infrared, to load soil maps, elevation data, and parcels with crop information. Let's first find our study area. I'll drag the OpenStreetMap layer from the browser panel to the map canvas and I've received a coordinate of uh, the study area in a latitude longitude coordinates. I can simply paste that into the locator uh, bar at the bottom of the QGIS window and it will then zoom in to that point. I'll zoom a little bit out to have more context here on the OpenStreetMap. I'm also changing here the projection of the project to the one of the Netherlands which is Amersfoort RD New or EPSG 28992. To be able to find back this extent later, I'm going to create a spatial bookmark. Here you can give a name for the bookmark, and you can add the bookmark to a self-defined group. So I'll create a new group, Precision Agriculture. Then I can use the map canvas extent as uh, the extent to be stored, and I can choose a user or a project bookmark. Project bookmarks are stored in projects. User bookmarks you can use across projects. So I store it as a user bookmark and click Save. You can find the spatial bookmarks in your browser panel. And I'm just going to zoom in and click on larger study area and then see that it zooms back to the extent that I've defined. We can load free layers for this area and for the rest of the Netherlands from the PDOC services plugin. Go to the plugins manager and search for PDOK. Install the PDOK services plugin. With the plugin you can get access to WMS, WMTS, WFS and WCS layers directly in QGIS. After installation you'll find a new toolbar. Click this icon to open the PDOC services plugin dialog where you find in Dutch laagnaam which means layer name, type which shows the OGC service and service and uh, more explanation about the service. Let's start with loading an actual orthophoto at 8 cm resolution in RGB. If you click a layer, you can find links to the metadata. There are three buttons there with standard. You just open the layer with boven, it means above uh, your active layer and uh, under at uh, the bottom of your uh, layers panel. So here I chose uh, boven, so it ends up above. And here you can see now the RGB aerial uh, photograph and uh, when I zoom in, you can see uh, all the details that are uh, visible at this resolution. So that's quite detailed. So now let's load also a near infrared uh, orthophoto, where uh, with red colors we can see the vegetation. So we can also see which uh, parcels have crops and which don't have crops. Here you see the result. And uh, when I zoom in, you see that this one has a uh, 25 centimeter resolution, which is already uh, very fine for us. And we can see in uh, bright red which uh, parcels have uh, vegetation, have crops. Let's export the layer to a GeoTIFF, which is more useful if we are with our laptop in the field without an internet connection. So I'm going to save it as a rendered image. I uncheck create VRT, and I call it infrared. I use our bookmark for the extent and for the resolution I use 5 meters. I use a coarser resolution here than the original layer just to save disk space, but uh, it's up to you to uh, choose a higher resolution if you need that for your purpose. But for detection of uh, vegetated and non-vegetated uh, parcels, this is already uh, good enough. There we see the result, and if I zoom in you see at some point it gets a bit uh, pixelated, and there you see the difference with the more crisp uh, online layer, which has a higher resolution. You can also in the layer styling panel see that we have now three bands, so we can uh, change the order of bands and use this for further analysis. You can also export anything that we have in the map canvas to a geo-referenced image, and therefore we use the export tool from the project menu, and we can choose the extent, and it appends the geo-reference information to the file. Let's call it infrared map canvas and save it to a GeoTIFF.
here we see that uh, it takes uh, of course the full extent and uh, if you want a higher resolution you need to uh, zoom in because you will get uh, exactly a picture of the map canvas. A better way of exporting uh, online layers, uh, raster layers, is using XYZ layers from the processing toolbox and create MB tiles. The MB tiles will uh, create tiles uh, at different zoom levels in one file so you will have a similar experience as with the online layers. Here I'll use a zoom range from 12 to 17 and I will use the bookmark for the extent. Keep the other things uh, default which have to do with compression and I save this as infrared MB tiles. After running close uh, the dialog and then you can add the file to the map canvas from the browser panel and when you zoom in you see that uh, it has the more detailed tiles uh, visible. Now let's add elevation data. I'm first going to load a 0.5 meter 50 centimeter digital surface model in the WCS uh, type, so a real raster. So we have uh, the whole country available at 50 centimeter uh, raster pixels and here it is. And before it is uh, useful and fast, it's better to export it immediately to the extent for which we need it, instead of uh, having the whole country. So export it to the map canvas extent. Click OK. There it loads. I can remove the online layer. And I can now style the surface model. Use single band pseudo color. And choose a ramp. I'll choose a ramp with a lot of different colors and then I can play with the minimum maximum settings to get a bit more contrast in the scene. Then uh, I can also uh, play with uh, the other settings here like a cumulative count which works very well with extreme values. And now you see there are uh, patterns here in the landscape. There are some uh, depressions, ditches, and former parcels. So that's all visible now. Often we are not interested in the human and natural objects at the surface and need a digital terrain model. So I'm now going to add the digital terrain model at 50 centimeter resolution to our project. And I follow the same procedure. I'm going to export it. Call it DTM. I'm going to use the same extent as the DSM. And there is the result. You can remove the online layer. And then I can copy the style from the DSM. And here you can see the difference and we can see a bit more uh, easily the contrast in the fields because the higher uh, objects are removed. These raster elevation models are derived from uh, point cloud data. And uh, if you want to filter and analyze it to yourself from the source, you can also uh, download the point cloud data directly from this website, geotiles.nl. Our study area is spread over a few tiles, but I'm going to demonstrate just for one tile. So we're going to download this one. And then the newest uh, version, so we have the most recent data. Available for four different uh, years. So the most recent one is uh, AHN4. After downloading, you can find the LAZ file with the point cloud data in your uh, folder. And if you drag it to the map canvas, QGIS starts uh, processing it. So first it will show you the extent. After processing, it will show you uh, the RGB colors in the data. We zoom in, we can see that these are indeed uh, points from the point cloud and uh, it's not an aerial photograph. And uh, we can use the layer styling panel to choose different ways of visualization, so the extent only, or use a classification. It has a built-in classification, it's a bit coarse. There are also other attributes available that you can use. I'm switching it back to RGB. There's also styling for the 3D view, which I'm going to demonstrate. You can choose to follow the 2D symbology or do it differently for the 3D view. I'm going to add... Um, aerial photograph in the background so we have a bit of context when I go to the 3D view. I add a new 3D map view 
and it immediately recognizes that the point cloud is elevation data. So I can simply navigate there and we can see the, the trees and the windmill clearly at the surface. I could also use a color ramp for elevation. But there's also a nice uh, newer tool in QGIS, the elevation profile. And uh, it adds a panel and it recognizes that the point cloud is elevation data, so it will be added. I can use this button to create a transect. And with the right mouse button, I can close the line and it will show me the points of the point cloud. But if I increase the tolerance, it will look in a buffer area around it and uh, gives a nicer image of objects that we encounter along the transect. So this can be trees, or crops, but also that windmill. And we, of course, have also other elevation data, like the terrain from the DTM. So if you go to the layer properties, there's a new tab there, elevation. And you can check a box and say that this represents the elevation surface. And you can change uh, the color on how it will uh, show up in the profile tool. And there I can switch it on. Switch off the point cloud. And um, if I zoom in, I can see more details. I can use a pen and zoom. And then you can see the more subtle differences in elevation here in the area and uh, the cursor is uh, also followed on the map and I can plot different elevation models on top of each other in this profile. A very useful layer for agriculture is a layer with uh, parcels and the Netherlands has uh, parcel data um, every year with, uh, with the crop and you can uh, load it also directly here in a WFS format, so real vector format. So here it's loaded. Make sure that you're zoomed to a small area, otherwise it will load all the polygons of the country. And the first thing that we're going to do is uh, clip this to our uh, study area. So I export this, save it to a geo package that's most efficient. We'll call the geo package farm data. And let's call the layer parcels. And I check the box for extent. And I use our bookmark. And there's our clipped uh, layer in a local file. And I can check the attribute table and there I see uh, different attributes. Gewas means uh, crop and it has a year. And uh, that is useful information to know what uh, crops are growing where in this area. Let's uh, style this map with a categorized uh, renderer. I choose the crops, gewas. Click classify and you get a random color. And that's a lot of different uh, crops in, uh, in the Netherlands. It's a whole uh, legend that I can filter to only show what is in this uh, view. That's already a lot of different cr uh, crops, but uh, gives a much uh, more comprehensive view on it. Now let's zoom to our study area and we see that this has a lot of uh, small sub parcels there. Uh, or study, so I'm gonna bookmark also this uh, more detailed location for later. Good smaller study area, choose precision agriculture and make it also available uh, for all projects uh, linked to my user profile. The last layer that I want to add is a soil map, and that's Bodum Vlakken. It's only available as WMS, so I only get a picture. I add it here and uh, you see when we are zoomed into this area there are just two classes but when I zoom out I can see much more and uh, it's an interesting map to look at for the whole of the Netherlands. Here you see the different uh, soil types. Uh, the one in the area that we were looking at is um, reclaimed land so these are very young soils. So it's also useful to see the uh, parcel boundaries on top of the soil map so I'm going to duplicate the farm data uh, parcels layer and I style the duplicate with a simple single symbol, a simple line, make the thicker black and then I uh, zoom to the smaller study area so I can see which parcel is spread over um, the different soils. 
So I hope this uh, video was useful and uh, you know now how to get access to very nice high resolution spatial data sets through the PDOC services plugin.